Hello people, I'm the Comic Book Gamer. Today I'm going to be talking about Detective Comics and the Batman Who Laughs. Because last time I talked about Batman while playing Arkham City, we were talking about Tom King's Batman. And how for me it's kind of 50-50, some of it I like, some of it not. And then some other Tom King stuff that I'm definitely not a fan of, but then some stuff that I am. Well then I want to talk about the good, because I'd say, aside from Tom King's Batman, which is again very 50-50, it's a great time to be a Batman fan. Because we have Peter J. Tomasi's Detective Comics run. And we have The Batman Who Laughs from Scott Snyder, which is really freaking good. I just finished reading issue number two of The Batman Who Laughs. Uh, I read issue number one when it came out. I just read issue number two. And issue number two, I just said this on Twitter, I think could very well be the best issue of 2019. I know it's really early. It's only January, but it's going to be hard for any issue to top issue number two of The Batman Who Laughs. So spoilers for uh, Peter Jane of Tomasi's Detective Comics run right now. The newest issue as of when this video came out is 996. So spoilers for that, if you haven't read it, there you go, and for The Batman Who Laughs, because big stuff gets revealed in The Batman Who Laughs. So, let's talk about The Batman Who Laughs first, because I'm really hyped up on what happened there. It's just, oh my gosh, it's so good. So, it's, of course, one of my favorite creative teams, Scott Snyder and Jock, who very well may be the best Batman creative team. Definitely one of the best. The way Jock draws, it's just, it's so creepy and eerie, which, if you've read Witches, you definitely know, or even Batman Black Mirror. Jock is very good at drawing uh, creepy stuff. Man, that was pretty flawless right there. And I was talking the whole time. I'm proud of myself. I generally suck at talking and fighting at the same time. Like, I can't get a coherent thought while fighting. But anyways, um, so the Batman Who Laughs, if you don't know who that is, he's a character from, like, the multiverse. And I did not read uh, Dark Knight's Metal, by the way. I read, like, two issues and, like, a spinoff. I did not keep up with that. I'm going to probably pick up the trade for it. But that was pretty much my mentality of it was like I saw a billion different uh, spinoffs. There was the main series and there was just too much. I was like, okay, if I really care about this, I'll read the uh, I'll read the trade. So that with the Batman Who Laughs, I probably will read the trade. But anyways, the Batman Who Laughs is a character that's been like taunting Batman for a little while. And I don't know how he first came into our universe or whatever. Again, I didn't read what happened there. But he is what hap he is Bruce Wayne from another universe. But he's what happens if he got infected by the Joker. And we just found that out in um, the in issue number one of the Batman Who Laughs because Batman's like I can't be the Batman Who Laughs because his whole thing is he's basically um, the Batman that doesn't lose. He's the Batman that everyone talks about to where oh he'll win because he's Batman. That's the Batman Who Laughs. You can't you can't beat him. Is essentially the thing because he'll do whatever it takes and he's Batman and that's just it. And he's Batman combined with Joker, so he's like super duper deadly. And uh, we find out that the Batman Who Laughs is what would happen if Batman killed Joker. Because Joker has a contingency to where if he dies, like, there's a toxin in his heart that will infect, like, the person that kills him. Or whoever's, like, a, like in the vicinity near him. And so, this Bruce Wayne did that in his universe, apparently. Again, I have, did not read Dark Knight Metal. I'm getting all this from the Batman Who Laughs issue number one, where Bruce was saying this. Oh, he said something wrong along these lines. To where, uh, Bruce gets infected by that and he becomes the Batman Who Laughs. Who's just this essential dude from, like, a Dark Matter universe. I don't even know what that really means but he's from a dark matter universe and he's just super powerful so batman's trying to figure out how to stop him meanwhile he's getting batmans from other universe he has a i can't remember the name of the batman but there's this one batman i don't know why his name's slipping uh from my mind right now but he's a batman that's armed to the teeth he's he's so sick he's basically just you know what if batman used guns and he's just awesome he i bet like him better than the batman who laughs but he's been partnering up with uh the batman who laughs and uh <laughs> they've been like taking people out they went broken no i can't remember what they did in arkham i remember them breaking into arkham though sorry i just read issue number two issue number one i read a few weeks ago when it came out so uh that one's a little fuzzy but issue number two is fresh in my mind so they broke into arkham i remember and like he just the batman who laughs was just slaughtering like everyone and they've also been going to different universes where there's br different bruce waynes and just dragging them into Bruce's universe and killing them. Like into Prime Batman's universe. The uh, Batman Rebirth's universe. And so just random Bruce Wayne's are showing up. And the GCPD's like, what's going on? Why are all these dead Bruce showing up? But we had a confrontation between the Batman Who Laughs and Batman this issue. And Batman uh, is talking to him. The Batman Who Laughs talks about how, did you know that every Bruce in every other universe I've been to is more happy than you? Said, you are the most miserable Bruce Wayne in the entire multiverse. He's like, I wonder why that is. And the Batman who laughs, uh, they were fighting. It was so sick. I've said his name so many times. I'm sorry, but it's hard not to. Uh, but they had their fight 
And it was really cool getting into Bruce's mind because during this, Bruce was talking about how since he's fighting essentially himself from a different universe, he had to change up his fighting method. He's like, I created a new fighting method. He's like, I started training again and I created a new fighting method because uh, if I use my old training, he'll know. Oh no, this dude's about to punch me. Damn it. I didn't think he'd get up that fast. But uh, he's like, if I use what I normally do, then this guy will know. So I created a new fighting method and that's how I'll take him down. And he was taking down the Batman Who Laughs, but then it turned out it was all a ploy from uh, Batman Who Laughs to get him shot by the Batman that's just armed to the gills. And so he got shot and that's when he tells him about the whole every other Bruce Wayne's more happy than you. And everyone's like, how do we beat this guy? I don't, I don't understand like the whole, like, why, I don't know why he doesn't call outside forces or anything or like what would stop, what would prevent like someone like Superman or Hal Jordan or someone like that from stopping him. I don't know. Maybe it's just a Batman thing where he's very territorial with Gotham and this is very personal to him. I don't know. Cause he's very much like, what do I do to stop him? It's like, I feel like Wonder Woman could take this guy on. I feel like Superman, like, I don't know, but you know, it's Batman. So that's how it goes. But by the end of the issue, Jim Gordon's like, I think I know someone who can stop him. He almost told Batman earlier, but he didn't. And uh, the end of the issue, it's the Jim Gordon, this is the big reveal. He goes to a grocery store and he sees this guy. He's like, you're the only one that can stop him. It's James Gordon Jr. I was like, hell yes. I'm so happy that James Gordon Jr. If you don't know who James Gordon Jr. is, he is uh, Jim Gordon's son who went psycho and just basically read Batman Black Mirror. He was the villain of Batman Black Mirror, which is my favorite Batman comic of all time that most of you guys know. Uh, it is my favorite Batman comic of all time. One of my favorite graphic novels. It's so good. Really where everyone, that was the book where everyone realized how great Scott Snyder is. Prior to that, Scott Snyder had done some good stuff, but that was the one where everyone's like, okay, this guy's legit gonna write some of the best Batman stories we'll ever read. Don't dare lie to me. And so he brought Jim Gordon Jr. back, which as far as I know, he hasn't been back since Black Mirror. Because Black Mirror, if I remember correctly, I believe he like fell off a bridge. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he fell off a bridge, like Jim Gordon was trying to save him, then he just like let go. Well, Jim, I mean, James Gordon Jr. let go. But uh, yeah, if I remember correctly, it's been a while. It's been a fat minute since I've read Black Mirror. So we don't know what happened to him, but apparently he's working at a grocery store now and Jim Gordon's been keeping tabs on him and he's going to help Batman take down the Batman Who Laughs. That just has me so psyched because all oh, Black Mirror was so good at seeing this character come back. And this was also the character that I wanted to be Arkham Knight in, the Ar in Arkham Knight because I was like, oh, James Gordon Jr. is a character not a whole lot of people know. It would make sense for him to be the Arkham Knight. He doesn't already have a persona. Because I think it, I thought it was kind of stupid to make anyone with a persona the Arkham Knight. Because it's like, oh, why would you change anyone to the Arkham Knight when they already have one? Like Red Hood. He's already Red Hood. He doesn't need to be the Arkham Knight. That's stupid. Or anyone else. But James Gordon Jr. didn't have a persona. He wasn't like, I am uh, the White Tiger or something like that. He didn't have his own name. He was just James Gordon Jr. So I was like, oh, Arkham Knight would fade him. Cause he, and he's a really great character. And Scott Snyder writes him really well. So to see him back just has me so hyped but that's enough on the Batman Who Laughs I want to talk about the text comics also but anyways if you're not leaving the Batman Who Laughs I was just picking up the issues but after issue number two I just emailed uh, my comic shop and said add the Batman Who Laughs to my pull list it's so good so issue number two got me to add it to my pull list and now I'm gonna have to read Dark Knight's Metal because of how good this is and yeah just really good definitely read it then we have Detective Comics who it was issue 994 where Peter J. Tomasi and Doug Mankey came on because prior to that, I don't remember who was right. I think James, wait, no. Was it James Robinson? I don't, or James Tyven 4 or something. I can't remember how to say his name. I don't remember who was on Detective Comics before then. I wasn't reading this. I just added it to my pull list because of Peter J. Tomas. So yeah, I added it right before 994 came out. So uh, we have a new store villain that's, like, we don't really know what's going on. It opens up uh, 993 with someone recreating Bruce's parents' death. Like, they find these bodies, and they, they like, had plastic surgery to look like Bruce Wayne's parents, and they're wearing the exact same clothes that Bruce Wayne's parents were when they died, and there's, like, a bunch of other similarities, and they're like, what's going on? And then someone kills, well, severely wounds Leslie Thompson, who is, uh, who was the lady that helped take care of Bruce and really helped him get back to a good mental state after his parents died. She's, uh, she's been a very influential character for Batman that shows up every now and again. Like, she was in, um, what was it? She was just in the, uh, what was it? Gotham by Gaslight movie. They put her in that. I'm trying to think if she could, if she had been in any of the movies. I don't remember if she was in that. I don't think she's in any live action movies. Maybe she was. I don't remember. But anyways, yeah. So, she got killed by this guy because she got 
w heavily wounded and Bruce is like trying to get her to stay alive but she's not because she's too wounded it's a very emotional death but it was, it was very well done she's dead now and then a, so, like someone that looked like Zoro rings the doorbell they don't notice it's someone that looks like Zoro uh, but uh, Alfred answers it and gets stabbed by the dude because he's like and Bruce is like who did it he's like a dude's that dressed up as Zoro and then uh, Bruce is like people are someone is just going against all and trying to kill all these people that I know like I don't know what's going on so then he thinks it's Henry Ducard who Henry Ducard was a uh, he was a pretty big part of um, well there's a whole storyline with on Peter J Tomasi's Batman and Robin run during New 52 to where we got to see Henry Ducard and his son and Damien ended up killing Henry Ducard's son because Henry Ducard's son came and tried to uh, kill like Damien and stuff it was weird but anyway it, it wasn't a bad storyline I remember picking that up when it was like in the dollar bin but anyways uh, if you don't know who Henry, Henry Ducard is, he's one of the he's one of Batman's old masters. One of the guys that when Batman, well, when Bruce Wayne went around the globe and was like, I'm gonna get trained by everyone all around and combine it and all that, Henry Ducard was one of those guys. He's like a French dude. He was like a mercenary. I think he's French. I know he's in France. I'm not sure if he is French though. I think he is. Ducard sounds very French. Anyways, I'm just rambling. So. He goes to find Henry Ducard, and Henry Ducard's like, they have a little spat, and he's like, I figured you're the one going after me because Damien killed your son. I didn't kill your son. I just want you to let that, you know that. I don't approve of Damien killing him. It just kind of happened really fast, and it wasn't my fault. And Henry Ducard's like, you think I was coming after you? Does it look like I've been I've been trying to go after you? Because he's like hiding in some catacombs. He's like, I've been hiding from some people who you probably just led straight to me. And it turns out he did leave some people straight to him this like gigantic monster that's like of an amalgamation of all of Batman's villains well not all but a bunch of Batman's rogues gallery just comes in they start fighting it it grabs Henry Ducard I did not mean to hit T there and do that flip but uh, they start fighting and he grabs Henry Ducard and sort of swallows him Henry Ducard pulls the pin on a grenade and boom Henry Ducard's dead but he takes out the monster and then well it looks like he takes out the monster I don't even know what that monster's deal is it was weird the best part about that was that, aw, oh, damn it, I did not want to do that. The monster uh, talks like everyone, so it'll be like, I'm gonna break you, Puddin, or something like that, because it talks like all Batman's villains. So that, that part's pretty funny. Like, it says everyone's catchphrases and stuff. Like, once he was talking about Nora, and then he was, like, talking about breaking Batman, and then he was, like, calling him Puddin and all this stuff all at once. is pretty good. But I didn't really care for that uh, villain. I don't know. I just don't like fighting big blobs like that. Like, it was the biggest fan of that, but it still was very interesting. And then Batman decides, okay, I'm gonna go see, I can't remember the dude's name, but one of his masters in, like, Korea. So he goes to Korea to find this dude, climbs to the top of the mountain. He sees everyone's dead except for one guy, and that dude thinks, like, Batman has something to do with it. Batman's like, no, I just want to see your master. And he's like, nah, we should fight. So they fight, Batman kicks his ass, and then Batman's master comes out, and he's like, hey, stop beating the crap out of the one dude that's defending me. And Batman's like, oh, my bad. And so then they have a talk, and it's like, okay, nothing's really revealed. He's just said it was, like, some big monster that uh, attacked there and, like, killed everyone. And so then Batman leaves. And then we see Batman go somewhere else. He goes to see Mr. Miracle. Because Mr. Miracle is, like, another guy that, you know, Batman cares about that helped uh, teach him, like, how to um, escape things and all that. So he goes to see Mr. Miracle. And Mr. Miracle is like super old. I don't know if this has anything to do with like the end of the Mr. Miracle miniseries because I have not read that yet. I'm waiting for trade. So I don't know if it has anything to do with that. But Mr. Miracle is super old. And he's like, Batman, don't come here. It's a trap. Batman springs off a trap and then they get trapped. And that's the end of the issue. So I'm excited because that means we're going to get a Batman Mr. Miracle team up, which is going to be really cool. And just so far, the story's been really interesting. I don't know who the Zorro was. That's going to be interesting. I have no clue who's behind it. I'm really stoked. Also, the art by Doug Mankey is just friggin' fantastic. I loved him when he was on Superman with Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, and now he's on Detective Comics. He's gonna be trading with someone else soon, though, and then coming back to Detective Comics, but someone else is doing a storyline. So there's that, but uh, it's just amazing. Pretty much, if you're a Batman fan and you're not a fan of Tom King, definitely read The Batman Who Laughs, or if you're tired of Snyder because he's been on the book for a while, well, I mean, he's been writing Batman for a while, even though I think his Batman's great, uh, definitely check out Detective Comics. It's really good, and Detective Comics definitely feels different from Snyder and, and Tom King. So yeah, I'd say right now, for comics-wise, it's a really good time to be a Batman fan. We have two great storylines going on right now, and just, yeah... I think that's great. Also, I heard the uh, current the Tom King storyline with Professor Pig was really good. 
those issues were not at my comic shop, so I wasn't able to pick them up. I might try to like find them online or something, see if I can get them on eBay or maybe get them digital if they're too expensive on eBay. But uh, yeah, they looked really good with Mitch Gerads doing it. I haven't read it though, because again, I don't have it on my pull list and have it on my comic shop. But anyways, if you are reading these issues, what are your thoughts on them? I, cur I personally, as you can tell, love Detective Comics and The Batman Who Laughs right now. It's so good, even though we're only two issues into The Batman Who Laughs and three issues into Detective Comics. I think it's great so far. But yeah, I want to hear your guys' opinions in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Legends never die. We've been going every night. I've been feeling way too blessed. But with Lex, I'm never stressed. They don't know just what we do. We've been out here with the crew. They don't know just how we live. Think we got too much to give.